Hello everyone, this is Professor Vishal Gupta with BUAD 425 Data Analysis for Decision Making at the USC Marshall School of Business. This video is on clustering the movie lens data set. It's the second part, uh, it's the second of two videos. The first was on using hierarchical clustering, and in this one I'll show you how to use k means clustering to do the same uh, task. Okay, so let's get started. Here is the movie lens data set that we looked in class. So I have in each of the rows a different movie, and along the columns are these various flags. So they had shown these movies to critics and asked, do you believe this movie is an adventure movie? And the critics gave it either a yes, no, encoded by this one zero. Uh, and before earlier, in the early video, I had used clustering to hierarchical clustering to cluster this data set. And now I want to use k-means clustering to cluster this data set to try and find some movie genres. So we talked a lot in class about why we want to do this, about how k-means works, and various things like this. Uh, in this video, I'm going to focus solely on the mechanics of doing k-means. So to do that, I'm going to go to Analyze, to Multivariate Methods, and Cluster. And I will change the method here that I use from hierarchical to k-means. And then when I go through here, I'll choose in this box all of the variables that I want to use in my clustering. Uh, again, when you choose what variables to be using, you should be thinking about variables that tell you something about whether or not two movies are similar uh, that are numeric. So I think each of these variables is helpful for me to decide if two, ver two movies are similar. Uh, the, unfortunately, the title, though, is not numeric, so I'm not using that. I place those into the Y columns. I hit OK, and I'm presented with this little dialog box. Now this is a big difference between hierarchical clustering and k-means clustering. In hierarchical clustering, you create the dendogram, and then by examining the dendogram, you choose how many clusters you want. And in k-means clustering, you first have to choose how many clusters you want, and then you can perform the analysis. So how do you choose? Well, typically, if you think about the business application and what you're interested in, you can identify a range of plausible things. So in this particular application, I'm thinking about creating genres of movies, maybe to organize them on the website and Netflix, or to do some strategic analysis about what sorts of movies we have in the library. Uh, and so I sort of intrinsically believe there are between uh, 10 and 20 movies out there. Different, sorry, 10 and 20 different genres of movies out there. Now, you may or may not agree or disagree. You can put in different numbers as you choose but I'm going to use 10 to 20. And then I'm going to hit go. And jump goes off and it fits the various numbers, various k-means clusterings for k equals 10, k equals 11, k equals 12, all the way down to uh, k equals 20. And for each of these fits, it shows you that, well, these are the various clusters in that fit. This is how many movies are in each cluster. And these are the centroids for each of the clusters, for in this case, for k equals 20. So which of these should I pick? Well, if you scroll to the top of this output, Jump gives you some cluster comparisons. And in particular, it gives you the CCC, or cubic clustering criterion, for each of these comparisons. Now, uh, not all statisticians sort of believe that CCC is the right thing to look at. Uh, Jump is a big proponent of using CCC. Bigger is better, and so in this case, Jump says that, well, the maximal CCC is at 20, and so it recommends you use 20 different clusters. Now, what I tend to do when I do these for my own applications is I instead tend to look along this range and look for where are there big gaps. So here I see a large gap between 10 and 11, a uh, large gap maybe between 12 and 13, 13, 14, uh, maybe there seems to be something going on here between 17 and 18. And I look at those gaps as places to start thinking about. So maybe 11 is a reasonable number, maybe 13 is a reasonable number, or 18, given the size of these gaps. I then sort of look, is there a simpler model than the full model of 20 uh, that has this 240 uh, CCC that also has a CCC comparable to that? doesn't seem to be in this data set anything kind of comparable to 240. 18 is still a bit off uh, from this 240, almost 20 points. So the last thing I'll do though is then I'll say, well, I'm kind of debating between this 20, this 18, uh, this 11, 
uh, and 14. And what I can do is I can go down to these descriptions of these cluster means and start staring at them and try to decide if one of them teaches me more about what's going on in my data than some of the other ones. In this particular case, I'm going to focus on the 18, because I guess that's what we did for our hierarchical clustering, just as a nice comparison. So if I scroll down to 18, here's 18. I see my uh, 18 clusters. This is how many movies are in each cluster. And along here, I see the centroids for each cluster. So for example, cluster 1, uh, none of the movies were in the action or unknown categories. Uh, a little less than 5% were adventure, but all of them were animated. Uh, the majority were children's movies. Uh, about a third of them were comedy. So if you want to, you can look directly at this to analyze it. Uh, if you'd like prefer, you can right-click, copy this table, and then fire up Excel. Uh, and paste the table into Excel. Then you can format it and maybe make it a bit easier to read or do some analysis with it. The same kind of caveats that I mentioned before about looking at this table directly in Jump still apply as from hierarchical clustering. So if you use any variables, if you're using a subset of variables, I should say to do the clustering, and you're interested in the means of the other variables in your data set, they won't appear in this table. So you have to kind of look at them directly in the pivot table in Excel. Uh, and by the same token, if you want to look at anything other than the mean, uh, some other function that you're interested in along these things, uh, it's sort of difficult to do it here in Jump. You're better off doing it in Excel. So how do I do that in Excel? Well, if I decide that I like 18 as my number of clusters, I can go here to this red arrow. Note this is the red arrow next to 18, not the red arrow next to iterative clustering. And I can select in here and select Save Clusters. And then if I look back at my Jump spreadsheet, I'll see that Jump has added two columns, one for the cluster for each row, and then another column for the distance. And this distance says that this first movie, Toy Story, I guess it was, uh, is in cluster one, and it's at a distance of 4.876 from the centroid of cluster one. If I'd like to export this to Excel, I can do my usual thing of going file export or file save as, save it down to Excel, and then create a pivot table, perhaps separating by these clusters. All right, that's all there is to k-means clustering. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or come to office hours. Uh, do check your notes for some of the details on how to create the pivot table in Excel. Uh, and analyze it there or take a look at the solutions online from the MovieLens dataset. Thank you so much, and I will see you in class.